So I was browsing the other day for some inspiration, looking for a small manageable scene. And I came across this courtyard pool and it looked nice and warm. And because it was kind of miserable out there and rainy and cold and blah. I wanted to recreate that in Blender and I turned this into this. So in this video, I'll break down how I did it and go through a couple steps. Let's go. All right, so here we are in a fresh empty scene and I'm going to fill it with the plane. Scale it up by five. Apply that scale right away and then go into edit. I turn on my edge length. First thing I want to do is get some guidelines in here so I know where I'm going to place my pool, my walls, etc. And I've built this all once before and noted down where it's going to be so it's going to be a little quicker. I'm not going to be too precise on this so. There's a little bit of a difference in the final result, so be it. Process is still going to be the same. Place this one at about a meter fifty ish. This half a meter down. About a meter thirty-ish, meter sixty somewhat, and one for good measure down here at about a meter seventy. So I am going to delete these vertices. I don't need them anymore. I'm going to face select. And I'm going to select my faces where my pool is going to go. And extrude them down to about a meter and a half. And I'm going to, while these faces still are selected, I'm going to duplicate them. Shift D, hit P, separate the selection. And I'm going to rename everything right away. This is going to be my water. And this is my ground. And the collection I'm going to call architecture. And for the time being, I'm just going to get my water out of the way. Focus on the ground. Going to edge select mode, select these ones here. Mm, actually, before I do that, I'm going to do another edge loop here and here. And then I'm going to select these ones and bevel them with 10 segments make them nice and round i'm going to control select my top edge here bevel that with three segments and I'll select this edge loop and move it over a little bit same with this move it closer to the corner and I'll put one edge loop here Bevel it with just two segments. So it's about two centimeters wide. 
Alt E and extrude the faces along the normals. Push them in. And one more loop cut about a meter off the ground. There we go. And I think the last thing I want to do is uh, bevel this edge a little. Just a hair. Give it two segments. Have it a little rounded. Now I don't want to see all these lines here, so I'm gonna add the new smooth by angle modifier and ignore the sharpness. Do I have my cavity on? I don't have my cavity on. I see it a little better in the viewport. And now I'm going to Select these faces, delete them, select these four vertices and give them a new face and add 11 loop cut. Select these three vertices, give them a face like this edge and hit F to fill a couple of times until I reach the end. Go on the other side here in vertex mode, select this one, then this one. The order is important. And select M merge at last. And now I can go along and just hit Shift R, clean them all up. Or because I'm using using machine tools, I can go just hit one. That way we have a nice little area we can sit. So with that, we have our pool. I can bring back my water. Collect it. And because I beveled the pool here, I'm missing a little bit. I'm going to go into top view and x-ray. Collect my vertices. I'm going to turn on vertex snapping. I'm going to extrude this one along the x-axis. Hold control and go right there. Now select these four, paste them, build them, I should say. Uh, select all the faces. And I'm going to extrude them up. One just below that edge here. This is my water. And now I'm going to build my walls by going off these edges here. Extrude it along the Z axis by three meters. Select all these faces and separate them. I'm going to call this. Wall left. Do the same thing. On the back side here. Hello. There we go. But this is going to be a little higher. It's at 3.8. Again, select these faces not this one these ones separate the selection and this one's going to be called wall back and select this edge and move it along the x-axis just over a little here i'm going to put an edge loop in here 
at about a meter and a half, a little more there. Put a horizontal edge loop in there. Somewhere around there. Take this vertex and delete it. Next thing I'm going to add a cube. I'm going to make this 3.8 meters high. I'm going to make it 0.3 wide on the x-axis. Move it up. And move it over to about there. Go into x-ray. See where my lines are. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going to select all these vertices. Move them along the y-axis. And same with these. And apply the scale. Same with this wall. Apply the scale. And I'm going to call this... Wall middle. Select the top face. Bring my cursor up there. And add another cube. I'm going to bring this up to about there. If I want to have a little bit of an overlap there. That's all right. I'm going to apply the scale before I tap into edit mode. Otherwise, those measurements will be incorrect. I'm going to have a loop cut out there. And I'm going to extrude this face down to about there. And select these faces, move them along the Y. The opposite side. Move it to somewhere around there. I'll put an edge loop in here. Extrude this face out to about there. another edge loop on there and extrude none of this is going to be none of the backside here is going to be visible so i'm not too concerned about it um this one i'm actually going to give a solidify modifier shaded smooth. I'm going to turn on even thickness. Delete that modifier from here too. So we got it this far. Now is a good time to save. Save us. Courtyard pool. So now I'm going to get this one out of the way. Go into the left view. Now let's add a cylinder. And I'm going to give this 64 vertices. I'm going to give this a radius of 1.3 meters. Depth doesn't need to be that depth, that deep. Mm, the wall is 0.3, so 
let's do it about 0.4 something and then we'll scale it after i'm gonna rotate this by 90 degrees bring it down just a hair turn into vertex mode i'm going to turn the edge length off for the time being into x-ray actually i'm going to go face mode first these two faces inset them by point three seven three Now I'm going back into left edit mode, vertex mode. I'm going to select the bottom half, move that down a little, and scale it on the z axis to zero. Now I'm going to move that down. Go to face select like these ones and these ones and delete the faces then i go into edge select mode and select these two loops and bridge them so let's move it in place I can scale that on the x-axis just a little bit. I want it to be proud of the wall, but not too much. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Now, because the, the texture for that arch is going to rely heavily on displacement, I want this to be very high poly. I'm going to go into local view and first we need to put some edge loops in here make that the same topology as on top of it uh, 18 yeah 18. 18 on this side cut that in half that in half Cut that in half too. Do the same thing here. And I'm gonna select everything and subdivide that a whole bunch of times till it's very high poly. On this scene, I don't really care about optimization, so I'm okay with that. I'm gonna select this face loop and expand the selection. Add this one. And I'm gonna delete those faces. So now I go back into left mode, select my wall, go into edit mode, x-ray, and take my knife tool, hit C so it cuts right through the mesh. And I'm just gonna roughly trace this arch. And I'm going to select these two faces and delete them Same with this one. And now I have a nice arch here. Bring my wall back. And this wall is going to have the same texture as the arch. So select all these edges and delete them, dissolve them rather. And put four in there and one horizontal so it's roughly squared. Select everything and subdivide that. About 20. Yeah, so the next thing I want to do is add some wood framing here. I'm going to place my cursor there and add a Q 
cube and i'm going to make this about 180 mil vertically there i'm gonna use face snapping the x g y snap it through these walls that snap it there now it's perfectly aligned i'm gonna apply my scale here Tap into edit mode at one loop. And now I need my edge length again. So I can have this the same as the other one. And I want to bring these over so I have a spacing of a meter in between. I'm going to select this face and this face and delete them. And I'm going to use this face. I'm going to extrude it out over here. Doesn't really matter how long it is. Go into front view and bring this down. I can actually give this one a solidify too. And then I want to bring this up a little. I'm going to move the origin to the geometry on this one. And I'm going to add an array modifier. I want to array this on the Y axis by negative one. And I'm just going to bring it seven times. Now the last thing that is missing here is the name first and foremost. All that wood framing. And I call our arch arch. And now I'm gonna add another cube. I'm gonna make this 0.01 high, give it 10 mil glass. Move this over. And I'm gonna turn on align rotation to target. That way it aligns itself to the wood framing. Uh, now I'm going to turn that back off. I'm going to move these. Move this X on the local. That touches the wall. And select both. And go into front view. And move that down. Nice. And this is going to be our glass. Down here, I'm going to add a cube. And I'm going to make that point too high. On the Y axis, so let's make it 0.23 deep. Move this up. Take these vertices. Move them there. These move over there. And all of them move against there. By the scale. And this is going to be my pedestal. The last piece of architecture is going to be my flower bed, which is going to be over here. For that, I'm going to add another cube. It's going to be high 08 on the X 2.12 and on Y 1.23. On this one up there, and bring over, apply the scale. I will take this face and inset it a little and extrude it down. I'm going to duplicate this face and separate the selection. And this one is going to get a bevel modifier. 
Well, this is going to be my flower bed. And the other one here is going to be my gravel. And this one is going to be very high poly too. make another safe and I'm gonna make a new collection and I'm gonna call this render and this is gonna get my camera my view will come from somewhere around here but I want to make it an 80 by 1920. And I'm going to give it a very high field of view. About 86 to 88%, 88 degrees, I mean. And then I'm going to place it. Well, that looks good. And I'm going to take my plus part two all the way up. Also gonna turn on render region to save some memory. Okay, now basically the layout of the scene is done. I'm going to turn on the render view and see a whole lot of nothing because there's nothing in it yet. Let's go into the world shader. I'm gonna pull this out, give it an environment texture. And I'm going to take this one here. It's from Polyhaven. And I'm going to get my mapping node in there so I can rotate it where I want it. I'm going to go out of the camera view for the time being now. So I want the sun to come this way. So I'm going to rotate this to... About 135 degrees. Now I also want it to be shining a little more down. Normally I don't do this, but because I won't see that much of the HDRI, I just use it so I have some clouds in there. Easiest way to do it. I am going to rotate this on the Y axis by negative 22. If I would see more of the HDRI, I would not do this, but in this particular particular case I'm okay with it that way once I give the glass the material I have the sunlight come right down here Just like these lines there it looks a little crooked that's okay now the other thing I'm gonna do make a new collection here I'm gonna call this lights I'm going to add another sunlight. Light. Sun. I'm going to move this out of the way a little. And I'm going to rotate that on the Y. So it has roughly the same angle as the HDRI, but is a little offset. And that'll soften up those shadows a little. And I'm also going to rotate it on the x-axis a little for that same effect. I'm also going to give this a black body. I know the HDRI has a black body color of 6500. The sun lamp I'm going to make way warmer. So when everything is said and done, it'll, it'll be a nice, nice warm color. Nice. So time to put some materials on here. First thing I want to do is get some light down here. I'm going to add a glass material for there. Pull this over. Open up my asset browser. Keep a glass material for those occasions around. And that lets a lot of light through. This would be the setup. And under the settings, I have to activate 
transparent shadows and that way all the sun gets actually through the glass cool next thing we're gonna do is the ground add a new material and call it concrete select my principle roll shift t and i have a concrete material here i think i got this from polyhaven.com pretty sure i did select my maps and it's all organized already now for some reason the displacement on this material by default is very strong i'm going to take this right down to 0.01 because I don't want a whole lot of displacement on it. Uh, let's just select everything and you project that once. Yeah, the scale looks pretty fine to me, but it's a little clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a noise texture. And a color ramp. Take my vector, connect it here. And I'm gonna control shift click it so I can see what I'm doing. Pull this one over a bit. Bring up my scale. Somewhere around there. Yeah, that looks don't like that black area right there. Uh, yeah, that looks better. Just a little more detail. Turn the roughness up slightly. And a touch of this, not too much. And I'm gonna make this a brownish color. I'm gonna drag these over. A mix color. I'm gonna set this to darken and plug this color ramp into there. Now right off the bat, this is a little flat. I'm gonna turn my factor on up a little. So the whole concrete is a little more grungy and dirty. Looks a little more used. That looks a lot. Now let's move on to the walls, back wall first. I'm going to go into face select, select them all and cube project. And then I'm going to give them a plaster material. Now this one to me looks way too big. So I'm going to scale this up or Oh, looks good. So I'm going to take this wall, my pedestal and the, nah, not the glass. This way. Select all these. I'm going to face select quickly, select them all. You, you project. Then I'm going to select this wall again, control L to link the materials. A little dark for my taste though so i'm gonna bring this over a little and add a hue saturation plug this in here and give this a slightly more yellowish note a little more sand color mm, somewhere there um, make this actually a little more saturated and bring the value up so it's a lot brighter to about there displacement on this one i'm gonna cancel out 
and I'm gonna go into my ground and I'm going to front view I'm actually gonna go face select I'm selecting everything that's under that little lip that we put in earlier everything under this little lip and I'm gonna come over here and add another material and take the plaster and assign that to the, those faces out of local view and I'm gonna switch over to my water give it a new material and get rid of the principal BSDF I'm gonna add a glass BSDF and a transparent BSDF and a mix shader plug these in there and I'm gonna grab a light path node and grab the is shadow ray and use that as my factor and that goes into the surface ooh this looks wonky and I think it's because the water has the size of the pool so I'm just gonna make it a little bigger in there ah oh, that looks a lot better cool now I'm gonna get a noise texture in here and a bump note Preview this quickly and give this way more scale to it. Touch more detail. Need roughness on there, me. Add distortion to it. Add into the height. That into the normal. And let's see what that looks like. A little strong. Let's dial this down quite a bit. It's a courtyard pool, so there won't be that much turbulence in the water unless you jump in. Now we're going to give this a little bit of a color by putting in a volume absorption node. Like that into our volume. Bring the density down to about half. And give this a nice pool color mm, that looks good let me just give the water just a hair of a tint to it usually a little bit of dye in the water with all the chemicals and the chlorine and all that ior 1.33 for water i still don't like the bump a little strong I'll scale down a little too. Yeah, I like that better. Mm -hmm. For a flower bed, I'm just going to use the concrete material. I'm going to select everything and cube project it. All it takes. Far in the distance, you won't see much of it. Go into local view on the gravel quickly. I think I have that material saved. I got these from Polyhaven 2. Way too big though. Scale that way up. I have something like this. And the scale of the displacement I'm going to bring. Something like that. See what that looks like in camera view. Plenty good enough. Okay. Now, brick material. The brick material, white sandstone. Throw that on there. I'm going to select everything and Q project that. Way too big. 
down a bit. That's about good. I'll go out of camera view for a sec here. Point one nine. What it looks like here. Yeah, that looks right. Now, for some reason, the ambient occlusion map didn't get imported here. Add a, an image texture here quickly. Throw that in here. And find my AO. Grab a mix color. Multiply. That in there. And because I want them a little brighter, I'm going to take a brightness note. And just bring this up a hair. So it roughly matches the sandstone. Our arch gets the same brick material. It was a little strong. I play with the mid level. The result of having that very tight geometry here. Level it like that, it should be fine. That looks all right. Throw a texture on the lumber up there. Unwrap that. And this one goes the wrong way. That's because I didn't put any seams on there yet. So let's grab our desired seams here. One on the top, all of them at the end, one on the top here and all four at the end and mark them as a seam. Got one. And now I can unwrap that again and it looks bright. I bet I have to rotate it by 90 degrees. And that looks better. And before I do anything else with it, though, I'm going to go into the array modifier on the UVs and just offset that a little. So every time the array, it's one more iteration, it offsets the UV, so they don't look just the same. This over a little, and I'm going to throw a few saturation node on here. Dial this back into the reddish tones a little. Up the saturation slightly. And bring the value down. The nice dark brownish red into it. Mm. And a little more like that. Nice color. And I'm gonna clear coat it a little so it looks like it's actually treated and not just bare stained wood up there. So that's the main texturing. Time to make a safe. So next thing I want to do is throw some plants in here. For that, I'm going to import a couple of palms I downloaded from Mega Scans. I'm going to use variation two.
I'm gonna use variation five. And variation eight. So I'm gonna move this over here, move this over there. Place this one first. I'm gonna exclude the X axis when I move it and place it there. This one I'm gonna place there and I'm gonna scale it. And then we have our third one, which I'm going to place behind here. Scale this to about there. Something like that. I'm also going to take this one. 50. and move it back there somewhere. I'm gonna scale it way up. Just so I see some plant up there. And I'm actually gonna shift D that one more time and move it over just a hair. And I'm also going to bring one over here. And yeah, I got it. plant it a little better. Bring it over here. Come on there. Scale it so. I have a little bit of that shadow in the water here. I'm going to have to bring bottom of the water down a bit too. To avoid any nasty reflections. That's a lot better. Now for some reason the FBX does not import with the material. Well it does, but it's empty. Select my principal PSDF. Control Shift T. Go into my plant folder textures and select the albedos I'll use the JPEG for everything in this case because I don't need that much of it roughness translucency there they are get rid of that normal map and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna all my plans and link the materials. I'm going to select them all and hit M for a new collection. Well, it plants. I want to make two little kind of cutouts into the wall here and place some amphoras in there. So I'm going to apply that solidified. I'm going to do that in solid view. For some reason the cavity turned off again. Mm. Cursor somewhere there. And add a cylinder. 32 is fine. Dial the radius way back. Small. Rotate that on the x-axis by 90 degrees. These are going to be way small. Something. Take my bottom vertices. Move them down. Scale them on a z-axis to zero. I'm actually going to space these out a little better. By using the loop tools and space. 
Let's see how big am I going to make. I'm going to pull these down. Let's scale it a little more. That should be fine. In edit mode, I'm going to select everything and hit Shift D and X to move one over. See where they are positioned. Shading them smooth. Select the wall and control minus. And I'm just going to select those two whole cutters and I'm going to move them into a new collection called cutters. And I don't want to see that. Now let's make a mattress in here. Place my cursor there. I'm going to add a cube and scale that to a nice thick mattress. Bring this up. And I'm going to fit this into this niche first. Won't fit it nicely. And I'm going to bring my top face up a little more. Nice thick thing. Lighter scale. Mm, going to edge mode. And I'm going to make a couple of cuts in there. Mm, I might have to make a couple more. Three and one. Make these out square ish. And subdivide it a whole bunch of times, probably about 20 times. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go into local view. I'm going to select my sharp edges and bevel them with about five segments. Turn on clamp overlap. Level them so they touch those. I'm gonna select everything and merge by distance. Now I have a nice mattress, nicely subdivided, so I can give it a cloth modifier. And just so it doesn't fall down. I'll turn the gravity off. Bring my quality up to pressure and shape is what I need. Pressure is going to be about 0.1. I'm going to give it a target volume of about 0.9 and a shrinking factor of about 0.13. That worked out pretty good last time. And let's bring up a timeline here. And see what it does. This doesn't look good. Okay, I'm going to play with this a little and speed this up until I have what I want. So this is what I ended up with without playing too much more around with the cloth modifier, which can be a pain sometimes. So I'm going to control a visual geometry to mesh. So it stays that way and that cloth modifier disappears. And I'm going to face select local view going to select the 
middle loops on my bevel. Of course, now that's all a little crunched. Probably should have done that first. But what do you do? What do you do when you live in a shoe? And I expand my selection and extrude those a little. And then I'm also going to go into my cop mode, take my cloth brush and just give it a little bit of grunginess. Not supposed to be a firm mattress, but rather something something soft that people have been sitting on and lounging on and just relaxing in the sun. Quick and dirty. I'm actually gonna take my creases in there too. Or is it just so it looks a little used and crunched up? Out of sculpt mode and out of local view. Let's see what that looks like. It's smooth. Maybe put a subdivision on there. Mm, don't really like those creases. On the front here. Where's my smooth? out a little okay that a material let's see what kind of fabrics I have kicking around I think I use this one get rid of my timeline here a little annoying see what that looks like hmm select everything you project hmm, let's bring up the uh, be a little, little on this one go about there that's okay next thing I want to do is add pillows First, I'm going to put this into a new collection. Let's call it decorations. I'm going to add a cylinder. I'm going to bring this up, rotate it by 90. Scale this down a bit. Bring it over. Scale it on the Y. So it fits on there. Go into local view and I'll select the end faces. I'm going to inset them a little bit and delete those faces. Go into edge, select, select this loop and grid fill them. And same thing on this one. And then I'm going to add a whole bunch of edge loops here. I'm going to select these two edge loops. Right at the end here. I'm going to bevel them. Decrease my selection and extrude the faces along the normals a bit. Looks 
like this. And this time I'm not gonna mess around with the uh, cloth modifier. It's just too much of a pain. Instead, I'm gonna put a displace modifier on there. It's way big. And turn the strength down. These, unlike the mattress, were supposed to be very, pretty firm. So they shouldn't have too much displacement, just a little bit. Just a little deformation, so they actually look, look used. Mm. Take my vertex here, turn on proportional editing, and just pull that one out a bit. Do the same thing on this side. Change the fall off to a little more random too. Mm, scale it up a little bit, make it a little bit big, bigger. Here. Park these in the corners. Duplicate this, bring it over to the other side. And rotate it a little. Ooh, this looks funky. Ooh, take down the So I'm gonna duplicate these, uh, not duplicate, select all these and link the materials. That's okay. I want to add some imperfections to this glass. So I'm going to duplicate the mix shader and pull out a principled BSDF. Roll shift T. And I'm going to add some imperfections on there because exterior glass, it's never going to be clean. Just so there's some dirt on there. Okay. Go back into my decoration. I'm actually gonna move, bring my cutters back. And move these up. So I'm going to go to Blender Kit and look for some pillows and I'm gonna use these ones by I'm not gonna try to pronounce this by this guy I'm gonna put it in the description so I'm gonna and this one here I'm going to rotate it around the X axis and just gonna place that somewhere. Mm. 
one around there. If the bring this over here and rotate it on the Y by 90. So the pattern is a little different. Good. Getting there. And I'm going to go into there and just add a sphere. There's one. Now I'm going to go over here into this one and add another sphere. Go into my shader editor and give this a material. It's gonna be fairly simple. I'm just gonna give it a noise texture. Object coordinates. And I'm gonna bring that up a little. Bring in a color ramp and give this brownish brownish reddish material mix in a little bit of a lighter one of that Plug that into the base color. And we have ourselves a nice little amphora. Fill in those values a little bit. Take the other one. Link the materials. And Bob's your uncle. Now the last thing that needs to be done is a lamp here. This one's a bit of a pain. So what I did here is I'm going to add a cylinder and I'm going to quadruple this and call this lamp. I'm going to scale it a little on this Z. Tap into edit mode and give it two edge loops. Scale those two on the Z axis a little bit. And now I'm going to take all these faces and extrude them along the normals and push them out. Go into my local view into x-ray and I'm going to select the back half and I'm going to delete it. Now what I want to do is 
go into face mode, select everything, hit X and delete only the faces. And I'm also going to select all my edges here. from underneath and I'm going to delete those edges. Now comes the painful part. Randomly selecting vertices and putting a couple of edges in there. bit of an angle here and there. All that will create an interesting shadow pattern when it's done. I'm not even going to attempt to duplicate exactly what I did the first time. This is just pure randomness. Same thing on the underside. The only thing not random is the very last one. With that, I'm going to apply my scale first and I'm going to go to object and convert curve. And that gives me the ability to go under my curve tab here on the geometry and extrude that. Till it looks something like something like this. Doesn't look that nice up close, but from a distance that won't matter anymore. And these ones will create that nice shadow pattern. Mm, let's do that. A little narrower. There, there we go. So now we can convert that back to mesh. Get out of local view, back to the camera. You won't see that it's a little, little wonky where the curve parts connect to each other. Give this another material. Pretty easy setup too with a noise texture. Mapping nodes and a color ramp. Bring this in here. It's a nice brownish tone. Let me make that one a little darker. And this one, similar color, but a little lighter. Hook that up. Dial these in a little. Now I'm going to take the scale down, give it a little more detail, I think. Yeah, maybe distort it a little. And I'm going to scale it. I'm actually going to make this zero. I'm going to bring the scale on the Z axis up. So it's more like a, more like a stripey pattern.
And this is the shadow pattern I was talking about. And I was hoping for some shadow caustics, and I know you can activate them here to cast and receive on various objects. The thing is, it didn't quite work, and I think it might be because of the glass or it's just too bright. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to my eye mesh and I'm going to put a spotlight in there. There it is. And that gives me a little bit of caustics here. They don't have to be too wild, but just having them there gives me a little more detail. We're almost done. One more thing I want to do is put a little access panel in here. Mm. Take my knife tool. I'm going to hit A to constrain it to the angles. going to inset this and then I'm going to select these faces and extrude them down. I'm going to take these edges Them a slight bevel. And I want to punch two holes in there. The easiest way to do that is I'm just going to put a circle there. Down to 16 and Way down. This would be a panel where you access drainage or whatever. Some pool technicalities. So I'm going to select this face. Delete it. This circle and this circle. Bring these faces down. Delete the top faces. Vertex select this and this. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. And now I can control select these loops and just put a big end on on there. Not too worried about the topology on this one. This one is an end one. And then I have my, my access panel. Like these loops. And a slight bevel. And I'm going to, if this is a different material yet, I'm going to select this face. these faces and give this a new material and assign it and call this plastic and 
give this a noise texture. Way high scale. Mm -hmm. Let's do object, something like that. And just plug that into the roughness. Maybe into a bump note. And there we are. There's our pool scene. Let's do a little bit of compositing and then we're done. Do one save. Right, let's go over some render settings. I'm gonna leave it at the full 4096. Turn on open image denoiser, which is a little more accurate for finer renders. And now I can use it with GPU. Nice. Leave my caustics on, of course. Color management, I'm using AGX with a high contrast. If we have to play with the exposure a little. Nah. Maybe a hair. That should be fine. Okay, let's turn off the rendered view here and render this image. All right, there we are. Took about two minutes to render. It's because I had the north threshold so so low and very high samples. So let's do some compositing and then we're done. Over to the compositor. And the first thing I want to do is get some color balance in there. Color balance. This all a little warmer. I'm gonna make it very subtle. So it makes the impression of a nice and warm image. Mm, let's put some lens motion on there. Again, very subtle. the hair. I don't want to do anything else with it. And because we use the denoiser, it's very clean. So I'm going to throw a film grain on there. Uh, I'm going to make a new texture. All this film grain. Use clouds. I'm going to use color mode. I'm going to dial the size all the way down to zero. I'm going to grab it texture input here use that film grain and mix it in there with an overlay where is my overlay there's my overlay dial this way down though. better and I think that's all I want to do to this maybe dial down the lens distortion a little more there's a very subtle effect Desaturate that a little. I think that's pretty good. See what it looks like. I 
to the viewer node compared to the render result, which is a little flat and a little more warmth to it. Probably could have played around with the cloth a little more with the mattress, a little, little uh, boxy. But uh, for this one, I'm okay with it. With that being said, that's it for this one. Turned out to be quite a bit longer than I anticipated. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you maybe picked up something here or there. And please let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you like this kind of format, maybe consider giving that like button a little tap on the back. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, right on.